Moo, and hello everybody. Welcome to the Pinktron. I am Brent Robinson. I am joined today by John Keenan. John, what are you drinking? So I've been gone for a while, so I feel like I have to double down, but I was not able to find any mushroom drinks, but I was able to find a mushroom blend powder. And the instructions on the back are add it to your <laughs> smoothie, put it in your matcha, or boost your coffee to nourish your recipes. This stuff has got like mushrooms I have never heard of. <laughs> I mean, it's got the stuff we talk about, cordyceps and turkey tail and chaga, but it's got it's got Latin names of other mushrooms, and this just showed up in the house. I think it's my karma now. So you you did not purchase this. I think my I asked my wife about <laughs> it, and she said someone at her place of business gave it to her. This is like, <laughs> is this a listener? They know. <laughs> yeah. If it was a listener, that would be the best ever. Yes. All right. And that voice you also heard was Sean Fogerberg. Sean, what are you drinking? Got a, a lineup of things. I'm not sure what I'll actually end up drinking, but I've got a uh, Bell's Two-Hearted IPA. Uh, so delicious, delicious. Uh, I think it's a Michigan beer. Uh, I've got a Guava Cooler Kombucha and mm. a Dragon Fruit Lemonade Lion's Mane Cordyceps drink. Man, I got to find those. Odyssey, is that the brand? Yeah. All right. I went, I, I don't know if, I, I think I said this in the last one, like I went looking for mushroom drinks last weekend and I could not find them. I still have not <laughs> found them, but I haven't looked hard since the last week. But anyway, all I saw, Odyssey, I'll have to look up that brand. All right. And oh, sorry. All I've got is a blackberry bubbly sparkling water, which, you know, um, <laughs> is what it is. Still early here, I guess. Um in any event, um, speaking of odysseys that you can go on, <laughs> you can ride Chasing the Sun in HSRL week two of the current series. <laughs> what an oddity it will be. <laughs> it's an a... odd set of scoring. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Chasing the Sun is is an interesting um interesting course so you go around Neokio out into um uh Umezi, up the temple KOM back into Neokio um so it's 35 ish k um so it should be an hour a little bit less for most most of the categories uh but uh there are two, three four sprints all of the sprints are fal points uh and then the uh, kom which is fts points so uh the first sprint is 700 meters into the race uh so you are this is going to be all out from the gun because of because it's fal as well so like you really are uh you're going to be pushing hard to be with the the front group of riders in order to sprint for the for the line uh then 3.9k in is the railway sprint so another you know you'll get a bit of recovery but it's still pretty early on probably uh, not much i think they're going to go hard till that second sprint i i think so as well um but after that there's a there's a long lull so from four to 17 K uh, you're basically chilling. Um, Although you do the rooftop reverse. They say the rooftop oh, is that right? Yeah. Well, yeah, that I offers. don't know when it's in there. So that's I think right. there's going to be some. It is right after the railway sprint. So I'm contesting that. Yeah. Especially because, you know, because the points are FAL, uh, you are, you're going to need to push to stay with whatever that front group is doing. Um, but then, yeah, the country sprint at 17K, Temple KOM at 21, um, and that's actually the biggest points. So the four sprints uh, total up to 200 points if you get first on all of them. Uh, Temple KOM is 200 points for fastest time. 
Uh, and then the finish is uh, 200 points for the winner. So it's split between sprints, climb, and finish. Um, if you do well at all of the sprints, and I mean, basically the strongest riders are going to be the ones who gobble up a lot of these points um, because there are the climbs that break up the sprints. So you got to be able to get over a climb and do a good sprint. And if you can do those things, you're going to do really well in this. I'm not a big fan of the first across the line points races. And I feel like that's because if you're at the top of your category, you're going to be in that front group. And if you get dropped by that front group, you're not going to get any of those sort of intermediate points. So it's just, it feels like it's just piling on those top 10, whatever number it is, riders are just, they're going to get the top 10 finish places. They're going to get the top 10 FAL points. It's, I don't know. It, it doesn't offer something different or as different as fastest through the segment, I feel like. I see that. Um, I do. So I do like this uh, just because we, we have done so much of the FTS, uh, FTS yeah. only races. Um, it is nice to have a, uh, a different challenge in, and, and I mean, this six weeks is a, like, it's a totally different challenge in total. Right. So like a TT Every week. points races, scratch races. So, um, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't mind the FAL when they pay deep, right? Like, right. Inevitably you're probably, you know, going to be racing against the people you're close to. And so when yeah. they're, when they pay deep, you're still like fighting for like one or two points against like the three or four people you're close to. Right. So then it, I don't mind it so much. It's when it's like that, uh, top five get when it's yeah. the ZRL and it's like, yeah, the top yeah. five only get points. And then it's like, why am I even sprinting this sprint if I'm not close? So right. that, that I don't mind so much. Right. You're, you're always can sprint against the people you're close to for one or two points here or there. I think the most interesting, I mean, I think the most interesting part of all this is, when when do you decide to swap the bike for that temple KOM, right? Because yeah. or do you're, you? Yeah. If you because that is the biggest solo, points. If you're solo, I see no reason why you wouldn't stop before you hit that line. And I can't remember if this is the one that's easier to stop or not, but I would definitely be taking time to swap onto a gravel bike to smash that climb because you know you're gonna it, you you you're going to want to get those FAL points and you're probably not going to give up any spots on the rest. And you might even swap back at the top in any event <laughs> to get some tower. Well, depending on where you are against the tower sprint, it might not matter, right? If no one's close to you, you're going to be in whatever position you're in. So I would, um, I would definitely and say fast coming down the gravel on the other side. So like if yep. you're going to switch, you probably don't want to switch to hit the pavement. Yeah, anyway. exactly. I, I actually think that the switch, uh, if you're, if you are switching, uh, I think the switch back does need to happen at the top. Uh, at if the top? Yeah, because uh, the amount of time that you lose during the switch. The slow uh, down? Yeah, so slowing down from slow uh, and then getting up to speed going down, even if you're not going quite as fast going down, isn't going to lose you as much time as stopping from essentially 60 kph because yeah. you go down and then there's more down. Uh, mm -hmm. There's not really a good like slow spot to switch back once you've uh, gone down. So you are losing essentially the whole time gap um, and you're, you have to slow down and get back up to speed. And does yeah. breaking help with that? Oh, or, good point. Yeah, I don't actually, I don't have braking, so. Yeah, yeah. if you had plays and could brake, that might change that math, because you could brake real fast at the bottom of the hill. Yeah, but people are still going fast. Right. By you. Like, so, so, you are still sort of giving up time, speed. And, and if you miss them, you're not catching them. Because you're yeah, stopped. If, if you're on gravel and they're on road bikes, you're not holding them anyway for the next. Right seven kilometers into the tower sprint i mean maybe well, you're yeah. strong enough but yeah so i've i've actually 
I've done, I forget what the, the race was where we, it was like a ZRL uh, where we did several, like several loops up and over the, the KOM. And there were a bunch of different strategies that people were using um, bike choice wise. And uh, I do, and th I think this was when the, the rolling resistances were more pronounced, the differences were more pronounced. And so a lot of the strongest in category were, were riding gravel bikes the whole time. Uh, I remember switching to a gravel bike after like maybe for the second of three climbs and having the third lap be hell trying to hold on. I think I was in B at the time mm. and just trying to hold on to a, like that extra 30 Watts or whatever that it took to uh, hold on on the flats, uh, on the, on the tarmac with the gravel bike was rough. Yeah. In the, when they did those rolling resistance changes, did they also make gravel bikes closer to road bikes on tarmac? I can't I remember. I know they made road bikes so. closer to gravel bikes, but yeah, I think they made gravel easier, but I don't think that they made gravel faster on. Yeah, I think you're right. And I, I've had the same experience. I've, I've actually, I remember there was one that started from like those sort of fishing village pens and went straight up temple and I didn't make it. Like I started on the gravel bike and I got dusted. Like I couldn't do it. I think it was at HWR. So it was yeah, like a mix one. Too, so it yeah. was hard, but still. Um, yeah. Anyway, I think that is the most interesting part of this race. And like I say, I think it's, if you're in a group of like three or four, I think it would be awfully tricky to drop off that group and swap and try and catch back up to them. And you can do it. You can definitely put 10 seconds difference in with Easily. the gravel bike on well, that climb. I don't know if that's true anymore. I don't know what the, the difference is anymore. It's, it's faster, but it used to be way faster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you used yeah. to like, because the, the pair, like doing two switches would maybe cost you 25 to 30 seconds if you were quick. Like it actually made some sense uh, to make the swap and swap back because you could make up so much yeah. time on the climb. Um, but I think if you're if you're solo, if 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 there's more than ten seconds between you and anyone around you, for, you know I think absolute I'd switch, definitely yeah. do it. Yeah, and I mean honestly. Uh, I think that this is a question of, so if you could, if you think you can gain more than two or three positions, uh, for doing the KOM, uh, on the, on a gravel bike, because it's FTS. So, uh, if you think like, well, if I just ride in this group and I'm going to be fifth ish, but I, if I switch, I could maybe do the fastest time. That might make that might make a, enough of a difference to even drop two or three spots uh, on the next two FAL or you know the FAL and the finish. Um, Especially if you think those three or four people you're with are going to drop you anyway, <laughs> and you're going to be dropped off the back of that group in any event, you might as well drop and see if you can't actually get a faster time on the yeah on the mm -hmm. KOM. Yeah, I think because of the order of these like and and the so it's a 200 the the temple KOM is 200 points but the it's a four point difference for each space or for each place uh the tower sprint is only one point difference and then finishes four point difference as well so if yep. you are making up more time on the climb or more more places on the climb than you think you're going to lose at the finish then it's a switch. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Well, I think it, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm glad Mary lines changed up the format. I think it makes it interesting. I probably won't be doing this because of the other things we'll talk about later, but yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's cool. It's, it's interesting.
So, so get in there. Uh, let us know in the comments if you've uh, if you what your strategy was, what you're using. I mean, I think I think the starting bike is arrow. I think I think it's a full arrow, mm -hmm. right? especially I, I, because you're you're thinking like FAL points. Yeah, you well, and because you, you might be on. switching, and you might be switching. That's right for the climb. Yeah, uh, and, and rooftop is pretty flat. I mean, the only switch. other option that I would consider to start on is the Tron. Um, if you think that you're going to be in a relatively large group uh, when you get to the Temple KOM and you don't, and you don't think you're going to want to switch. True. That is, that is fair. Good. All right. Moving on to moving on. <laughs> Kurt beginner racing this week. Yeah. Uh, Park I think perimeter. John had, yeah, there you go. Park perimeter loop. And I think it's two laps for everybody except the lowest category. So this is our beginner racing. Yeah, one lap for what he's calling ease, which I guess is a little bit of a misnomer because now all these races can be found on the Zwift Labs Club because they're using the Zwift Racing Score as the different uh, category delineators. Um, and it goes all the way up to, I forget, I was just signed I up think for it. The A cat goes up to 550. Sounds right. It was 500 and something, I thought. So uh, you don't necessarily, like some pretty strong riders, and they probably not really beginners, but they, they could just be new folks and i would encourage anyone who wants to race it to try it out because it's a great environment for new racers there's plenty of folks who are uh, experienced in it and can give tips um, there's usually a pretty good chat going on during the race uh, especially if nate or any of the other organizers are involved they're usually giving little tips to folks yeah the uh that top of the category is essential the the top of the uh, racing score band that top band is that's strong riders uh yeah. so i'm i'm just about at the top of that cutoff um and so yeah it's it's strong it's strong c's all the way up to small a's with no sprint uh, mm -hmm. are are in that uh are in that band but that won't necessarily be your band because every band is about what 150, 125 to 150 uh, wide. So I think maybe, even some of them are like 75. So is it that small? Yeah. So there's a 300 to 375 and a 375 to 450. Um, so they're all fairly tight bands, um, which I do think is is good for is good for racing. Um, I have. And we'll talk about it more later, I think, but um, I, I do think that these uh, these new ZR, the ZRS bands do provide more interesting types of racing or can provide more interesting types of racing um, because of the mix of rider types that you get. Now on the companion app, it says three laps, not two three laps and then two laps for the lowest zero to 200. I'm seeing that as well, which makes some sense. 30, it's a, that, that makes it essentially 20 and 30 K, which. Yeah. yeah. It's a good length. Yep. Yeah. And I think, so I, my understanding I, from the herd chat is that this experiment will continue. Although I think they're going to try and bump those limits down a bit. Yeah. So, and so, so these are in there. staggered uh, leave times, fastest first, slowest last. But can you see other people on the race? I don't. I have not ridden this yet. My understanding in HBR is that the different ones start in different pens, but they all leave at the same time, and and you can see them. Okay, that's my recollection. Or at least that, yeah. that's the way it used to be before this. They went to the racing score. Yeah, the the time release, like the 450 to 550 uh, group is leaving at 11 tomorrow, and then the 375 to 450 are leaving at 1101. 
Oh, so they aren't oh, so they all leaving together. Now. Yeah, okay. so it's like minute, 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 and then uh, the 0 to 200s are leaving in 11.04. So. I'm actually interested to see what the um, what the signups have looked like uh, since, since it has become a Swift Labs um, mm -hmm. event. Um, whether there have been more more riders or or fewer actually showing up i know the first couple of weeks nate said they were quite strong oh good it is summer i've noticed yeah indeed are you are you in the hot part of the world or the wet part of the world <laughs> well yeah i'm on the left coast but we don't get rain from now till like october which everybody loves but it's definitely a little toasty yeah, we're in the hot part of the world right now, but uh, I know if you're in like the Great Lakes type part of the world, you just got just flooded. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's soggy. Yep. All it's right. It's like last week the the peak was uh, around forty riders, um, so like thirty five to forty for several of the of the race times. So uh, not bad. Very nice. Good. Well, if you if you're in there, you know, drop a note in the comments. Let us know what, how your experience has been, what you liked, what you didn't like, either in here on the race, and Nate will take that into account and we'll keep evaluating that. And that will bring us to the climbers gambit, which now we're into the really interesting weekends, and we don't even have our illustrious uh, climbing gambit leader. So, um, yeah. So. Got, we are on rooftop rendezvous yet again, right? So uh, this time we'll be doing three laps. Uh, and this week's uh, challenge is to do the fastest, slowest time. So what is what is going to count is your third fastest ascent of the rooftop KOM. Rooftop KOM, you'll know it well if you've been doing the series, but is... Um, where was it? Um, it is 1.9k at 2.7 percent, so a pretty flat one. I don't. I, I think you guys were talking about it last week, and I do think that uh, Brent, you were probably right on the nose that this is a probably a uh, a time trial uh, bike as the the best choice. Um, but this is a this is a pacing um challenge this is not necessarily just about who can do the fastest climb uh if paced well the person who can do the one fastest is probably going to do a good job with their third fastest but if you blow yourself up on one of those ascents uh you might be struggling on one of the later ones so uh, make sure that you, and, and, but you don't, you also don't want to go out too easy on one of your early ones, assuming that you'll, well, you know, I'll get a safe one in and, uh, make sure that I can just keep doing that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm really intrigued to see how, how this goes for people because, uh, just I'm I'm really I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what the the times for different people look like. Does it look like some people go out too easy early on? Uh, does it look like some people go out too hard and then absolutely blow up? Yeah, I having not done any intensity in two weeks now. Uh, I'm. This is going to be a hard. Uh, a hard thing for me like i don't know what i can do for this time frame right now uh even doing one of them so doing three and trying to get the fastest lowest time is a an interesting challenge i feel like i've yeah. never seen this scoring in any other race the fastest slowest time and now the intellectual side of my brain is like oh this is great we should do this more often we should 
Yeah, it's very interesting. And I mean, it'll be kind of good that they you're getting one triple one this one and then another week to try it next week because it yeah. is something that I would want to try more than once before I'd feel I'd nailed it. And right. I, mean, I, I think the only thing you can really do is go like sort of medium hard. Like, so my, my PB is like a 251, which won't be on a TT bike. That'll be like in a race or something, yeah. but I could probably do something like a 305, I want to say. So you probably want to aim for like that plus two or three seconds and then try and get like onto that the next two times afterward and try and match that pacing. I, I just don't think there's much else you can do for it. So it looks like uh, my fastest uh, climber's gambit effort was a 329. Um, and that's at essentially five watts a kilo. So I was probably a little ambitious at 305, probably closer to 315. Yeah, this feels but, like I should race it and f try it once and see how it goes with three tries. And there is no way I'm going to do that whatsoever. Like, <laughs> like the trying will happen in the race. Right. Yeah. Like, so you're you're saying like go out and do a uh... do a pre race, right? Yeah. So you're like, okay, I'm I'm gonna set my target at pick a number, 300 watts, and that's where I'm gonna like go for it and. If I totally blow up middle of the third ascent, and I'll be I know. like, okay, yeah. let's dial it back a little, or I've still got something in the tank. Let's knock it up to three hundred five. But yeah, I like especially because the uh, the time in between these ascents is not super long. No, the recovery is down limited. Three percent takes three minutes, mate, less than three minutes. Less, because like, I mean, yeah, it's a, if two, it's a three, it's a three and minute and a half, climb. Yeah, if it's a three minute climb, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a little under 2K. You're probably going, it's probably a two minute recovery for your three, three and a three to four minute effort. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm going to, I mean, with my best effort uh, being five ish watts a kilo. Assuming I was in good shape, I would probably aim for 4.4. I think that's like somewhere in that like 90% of full max um, and see if I could repeat it. Um, but again, that that could be too ambitious. And I like, I don't know. I, I don't know. And I mean, it'll anyway. I'll, I guess we'll all find out, or the people racing will find out. Um, mm -hmm. It's a, it's a tricky problem. There's no obvious answer to it. I don't think. Yeah, I guess the only other thing is, of course, there's a probably. I'm trying. I think, if I recall, the outlet of the descent is quite close to the inlet to the climb, right? Like they're really yeah. close together. So you can mm -hmm. even probably carry speed. On lap two and three from oh. the descent, and you're, when you're talking about saving oh, like so three, going, four seconds, yeah. So you're you going to start winding up. So that that would argue for going a little harder on your first attempt, uh, because then you can back off a little bit on those uh, second and third. Uh, uh, yeah. So again, this is like, how do you get your slowest time fastest, right? Mm -hmm. And so it might mean going a little harder on that first one than your like optimal power uh like distribution would look um in order to get that one a couple seconds faster so that you can make up for that with the the extra speed that you can carry from the from the descent yeah no good point this is yeah i like this this is fun mm -hmm. It's like a video game. Yeah, it's super cool. All right. It's like a video game. I'm using it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Moving on to... I have no idea. Mountain Goats? Mountain Goats? Is that Who a... knows? <laughs> the mystery series ever continues. What we do know about for sure is Stampede will be one lap of Coastal Crown Loop. 
Tell us about Coastal Crown. Is that the that's oh that's the one that's got the um the double climb in it. Yeah, so it's got Mayan and Itza and then downhill from Yeah. the when you finish uh Itza, you're gonna hang a right and do the bottom half of the grade. Um which is kind of an interesting thing. It now I thought this was only 20 kilometers, but this is telling me it's 23. It's a long lead So in, I think, yeah, it from ain't the key pens. lead in. I thought it was only a 5k lead in. Yeah, because it doesn't really start till the first KOM banner, I feel like. Yeah. So um maybe take that distance that I use it with a bit of a grain of salt, but it 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 is a little longer. I mean I, I mean I guess the kind of fun, interesting thing is you Well, so I, I think the question is, where is the finish? So the it's a um, the route is it set. I mean, on on Zwift Insider, it says fifteen k with a five point six k lead in. Um, but it's possible that that lead in is not from the pens. So Um. it's from like a spot there. So, and the actual pens are back Or a little further at the back. bottom of the thing. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be closer to 23 and the finish is at the, at the Mayan, um, Right. So you have to do the Mayan two KOM. times up the Mayan KOM. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, it's still, still a full TT bike because neither one of those climbs is super steep. Um, But it's net uphill. It is net uphill. That's a new one, <laughs> Yeah. but you're going to get two. You're going to get one very fast descent down. Yeah. So, I mean, so the pacing is kind of like, um, you know, medium hard, like 105% or something like that of your target up the climbs kind of sprint to get up to speed and then chill a bit. down the hill and then sort of 95% of your target. It's kind of like Bologna, but not as exaggerated. Yeah, Bologna light. Yep. Uh, Yeah. but And then it's but it's Bologna light if you're doing two laps. Yeah. Or a half a lap on the end. Yeah. Because that that Mayan is a it's a mellow climb Yeah. relatively. It, it, and it's shorter than the Itza one. So it's, it's, it'll go by fast. And so basically I think it's once you get to that Mayan one, it's empty, empty the tank. Whatever tank you've got left. Yeah. Exactly. So Cool. I, like I said, I have now done this route a couple of times because it's been part of chasing yellow, but I haven't time trialed it, but I think it's a fun time trialing challenge or an interesting time trialing Yeah, challenge. so do I. Yeah. So, and I I think know, this pick might end up being one of my favorite TT loops. Oh yeah. I think, it, I think there's Yeah. all kinds of fun things you can do with this particular route. I know the one I, I think it was this one. Uh, anyway, there was one where I chased some people down this hill and they then the finish line was like at the not at the Mayan KOM, but at one of the sprint banners there. And uh it was like, you know, they're like eight seconds in front of me. And it was just like a challenge to like go down the hill as fast as you can, then try and like drag them back on the flats. So I did not catch them. They were too strong for me, but um it's uh yeah, it's a cool route. And uh, fastest, I mean, you might take a climbier TT bike maybe than this, you know, the full Cadex disc, but I think there's, you know, there's everything's going to be a bit of a trade off here. So probably just pick the one that you think has the best paint job. <laughs> And Trials the and and you know, we'll see if Brent's doing this. Probably not, but I'm assuming that if he uh, does, it will be with the rainbow wheels. Oh, Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. that'll make Always it faster. the rainbow wheels. Yeah, maybe on Monday night. We'll see. Yeah, so that's good. That will bring us... I think that's it. Bullseye remains on vacation. Um, just briefly, it looks like next week's um, next week's H HSRL is going to be a scratch race on Glyph Heights. So um, yet another of the newer routes. Uh, I just want to see which one I that don't think I've is. ridden that at all. Yeah, this one's a that's a hard. It goes up the KOM right after. Yeah, so rather than taking 
uh, the left and going down the grade, you do the upper half of the grade. Uh, and then even from there, you go left and do the upper part of uh, Epic KOM reverse or Epic KOM, I guess. I guess that's the forward um, before descending and then going and doing um, part of the jungle. Um, yeah, so that's a that'll be an interesting and difficult um, race that, again, that one also finishes um, at the Mayan mountainside climb. Wait, you go back through the jungle, loop around and then come back up the yeah yep KOM. yeah you start at the pens or there's a long it's that eight it's that same 8k lead in so you start at those pens at the bottom of the grade go along the bottom route start you know, technically start after you've done mayan once up mayan right. and itza and then up the top half of the grade hang the left onto the top, the top half bit of, of the yeah of epic finish epic down to like where the <laughs> jungle pen bypass sort of stuff is then you turn left into the jungle down the jungle come out through those jungle pens into that chunk of the mayan stuff and then you'll hang a left to go up into the mayan stuff to finish so scratch it's race. a cool route but that's going to be a hard <laughs> race yeah it's going to totally separate everybody on that big big climb and then unless there's a lot of people i think it's you're going to be riding in little groups yeah, Absolutely. My, my advice after having done that now several times is don't don't underestimate how much time you can make up with good pacing on that steep part of the grade because I have now caught a number of people who like smashed it to hold a group in that eats a bit and then did not have the gas to get those top bits of the because it gets steeper and steeper the further up those switchbacks you go. So. This is so uh, you've you've now raced the this this kind of triple climb a few times mm -hmm. uh and I'm, I'm assuming it mostly does actually in a race feel like one climb yeah there is a pretty good chunk of flat between the top of mayan and where itza actually really climbs. starts you're, yeah. you're even into the kom before it really actually yeah. ramps up so you know it does feel a little more like Three, but I mean you gotta stay on the gas because they you know they don't tend to just wait for you <laughs> um but yeah, yeah it's we'll talk more about it next week but I I'm interested in in how this one plays out as a again scratch race uh in HSRL who who knew it was possible anything is possible good well that that is the week of herd racing. I think that brings us to around the horn. So the, I guess we're going to talk about first thing we want to talk about is getting back on the bike after being off because of vacations or COVID or, or uh, I guess I was kind of, I had only ridden like twice in 17 days before I started doing chasing. I can tell you how that went too. Why we, that sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> oh, you, life choices. Have you right looked there. at my Zwift racing score stuff? I haven't. Oh, yeah, it's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> well, anyway, let's start with uh, well, let's start with John. Maybe John, you you had to take a, you had a vacation, then you, you had some health stuff that kind of forced you off the bike. Yeah, vacation had fun to begin with out for like eight days i actually managed to squeeze in i think uh hsrl when i got back i got back late on a friday and i rode one on saturday and didn't do nearly as badly as i thought after being out for a week i, I don't know sean what your thoughts are on like how much you deconditioned in a week but or eight days um but it felt okay and then two days later i was hacking my lungs out with uh, covid for a good week 10 to almost 10 days which was very unpleasant and so now i'm really interested to see how this weekend goes because i'll probably try to do herd beginner racing and maybe hsrl on sunday we'll see how i uh, heard beginner race feels um i've been doing like easy runs and group rides and nothing too hard and i haven't died yet so keep going and, and do you have like a particular like 
strategy you're following or just sort of take it as you feel it or? Yeah, I, I haven't thought too much on it. My plan pre all of this was I need to start doing swimming more because I have this vision that maybe I could do a triathlon um, with my daughter. And so I sort of set that all up. I started swimming before vacation. Uh, it's going as classically horrible as I thought, but I'll get better, I assume. And I've got a coach uh, who's going to help me out. And uh, so, yeah, I'm mostly feeling my way from the recovery. I wasn't, I was thinking a week off, you know, it'll have an effect, but um, getting sick and having chest stuff has definitely made it, uh, made me a little more tentative. So is the, are things kind of sticking around uh, post or? I, I, no, I'd say like 95% better. I mean, I still, still got a little like of that phlegmy cough going every once in a while, but it's not like, I mean, I've got my heart rate up 90% of threshold and I haven't like, you know, haven't had to stop. So. Uh, I am interested in, so I guess this is a terrible upside, but upside your daughter got, you got your daughter got it too. So you're at least both. <laughs> Gonna slow her that, down too. Bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Commiserate together. Right, right. Um, She's cra crazy strong, so I I don't have any uh, visions of keeping up with her. I just want to be in the same event, and we'll have that camaraderie. Yeah, I uh, I I do think it's funny. Uh, the I feel like for triathlon stuff cyclists people are either cyclists or runners uh yeah, yeah. and like it always ends up being the struggle to figure out how to swim and not die while yeah. other people are around you kicking you in the face and <laughs> yeah yeah I, and i, don't know I, I mean just that, swimming but... any distance without stopping is not i i mean i've got stamina but somehow when i get in the pool I, it's like i don't have stamina anymore it's different. You got to use your shoulders, and your guts, and all kinds of other things. <laughs> I, I want. It feels like it's a breathing thing. Like if I could, mm, yep. You know, backstroke it. Maybe I don't know. I, I'll. It'll see. It'll be interesting to see how this goes. Are those? Are those? Uh, like the the snorkels that just go out over your head, like illegal in a in a triathlon. I wonder, yeah. I saw a guy training with one of those in the pool and I was like, oh, yeah, that would make a lot of sense. Yeah, I I think they're, well, I mean, I'm sure people do all kinds of crazy training stuff with them. I think they're really quite focused for like certain technique work, right? Especially like mm. kicking technique. But, you know, you're going to need to do a lot. You're going to definitely need to do a lot of swimming where you practice the actual breathing part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I and like, I think the tricky thing, of course, whenever you're getting to the swim stuff is just to like separate what's like long distance or triathlon swim training and what is normal swim yeah. training. Cause like most, like a long swim race is like a 400 meter swim race or an 800 meter swim race. And right. you know, the shortest, you know, a sprint triathlon is like a 750 meter open water swim and Olympics 1500 meter. Mm -hmm. So it's a totally different discipline really. And you know, some of the tips you get about how to, you know, breathe on each side every third stroke and stuff is like no don't worry yeah. about any of that like yeah. it's good to be able to swim on, breathe on both sides in case someone like is splashing the other side or something but breathe every two strokes because you can't do that nonsense for an hour <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean the i guess for most people it really does like you're just trying to get through the swim to get to the things that you feel like you can actually do well yeah. I mean, I've heard reports where people say their their peak heart rate was a minute before the swim started. <laughs> uh, in, a, in a cold water, I could believe that. Like it, it is, it is yeah. a shocker in the morning. <laughs> but you can definitely do one. I was just, just real not. You can, you can get her done. Yeah. I just need to figure out how to 
swim the distance. I think that's really it's. Do you guys have a like, a plan for a, an event? Not yet. There seem to be several around town, and very. I mean, and some of them don't follow the the sprint Olympic like they're their own distance like mm -hmm. one of them's a 280 meter swim which is like oh maybe <laughs> i should do that one sign me, up. <laughs> sign me up for that but then the bike is like uh 28k or something i think it's just what's convenient for them to to make a course i think those are the funnest ones like uh, all that yeah. structured stuff like it's cool at some point but th yeah. those are the funnest races yeah I mean, I think it'd just be fun to try it and right transition and get out of the water and get on a bike and once you know, if it if it gets to the point where you're actually doing it, Brent's got all the all the little tricks. Right, right. <laughs> Don't well, try that's the safety pin your number on in transition one. That's a bad plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the YouTube videos are definitely aimed at a different demographic of people who are who are like they're they're shaving little bits off of whatever they're and i'm like i just need to finish this like yeah cool cool all right john you were you were on holidays for 10 12 14 days -ish. yeah so uh really uh doing everything i could to crater my watts per kilo uh by losing watts and gaining kilos <laughs> so i was i was essentially on a boat uh for over a week uh with you know there there's there's some aerobic conditioning that could happen but it's you know going for a couple of hikes um and i you know hikes and kayaks are not the same as uh getting a couple hours in or an hour plus a day uh on the bike um even and this is so you asked earlier like how much do you lose in 10 days yeah um like in a week you essentially lose nothing right you you lose a little bit of that sharpness but i mean that's a rest week i i do those all the time okay. um you know uh Every three or four weeks, I'm taking a, a week of easy riding, but you're still riding. Um, still getting zone two endurance yeah. kind of work. And so yeah. your body doesn't think like, okay, we can turn it all off. <laughs> Let's consume this and turn it into calories. Yeah. Right. Um, and so I have found that when I am actually just off the bike for a couple of weeks, you know, 10 days a week, sickness, uh, travel, whatever it is. Those are the times when I feel like I have, when I really see just how quickly the, you can lose. Um, and it takes two or three weeks, uh, often before you're feeling good again. Um, I often, um, like you do end up coming back stronger a lot of the time. Um, I mean, I remember, uh, Tatum a couple of years ago when he had his, like, I gotta, I gotta just stop because he, he had his heart thing. Mm -hmm. Um, the, I think that rest from, uh, just like he had been doing a lot beforehand and then was forced to rest. And when he came back, you, again, you don't gain it immediately, but once it comes back, you can often uh, go beyond where you were before. Hmm. Um, so that's, you know, fingers crossed. Uh, my week back has really just so far, you know, Monday through Thursday, we're all just zone two aerobic rides um trying to get my heart rate so the hardest one like was what was mid zone two before and heart rate was top of zone two like edging into zone three uh 
for just an hour aerobic ride with the like Maria bot, um, where that would have been 10, 15 beats per minute lower two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of those things where it's like, you know, pay attention to what your heart's doing um, yeah. and just like giving it the, the little bits of challenge before like, you know, this weekend I am going to try these uh, the races and that is usually the stimulus that you need to get back to the, the track that you were on before. Um, like, I think that, that for me, the way that this works is increasing aerobic rides and then hitting myself hard with a couple of races um, before getting back to like training um, usually ends up working pretty well because it's, it's like getting your body used to doing the thing and then reminding it what you really want it to do. Right. I was thinking that, uh, so I use intervals.icu to sort of look at data and they do let you chunk it into seasons and you can yeah. set your, your time frames whenever you want. So I've definitely decided like, it's a good time frame. It's a good season break. Cause it is what I do tomorrow is not what I did three weeks ago. Yeah. And the, uh, it, it is always nice seeing a bunch of new PRs. Yeah. Yeah. On your I, I need to get into intervals. Ever since I swapped my uh, Zwift or to my Zwift PC off my laptop, I didn't. I don't like sit in front of it anymore, so I didn't put on like the mm. golden cheetah and stuff. So I need to like get the data synced up so I can just use a little simpler because golden cheetah sits on your desktop, right? And it's it's it. it's more than you need most of the time. Well, that too, yeah. Yeah, I I mean, I I use it and. But that's just because I'm a data nerd. Yeah, well, me too. That's that's why I used to do, uh, or I used to anyway. Now I've just been busy and unfocused. So I was so before uh, I did chasing yellow. Yeah, I, did... I actually really um, I looked at your the the Zwift racing app numbers, and it is fun seeing that you are currently ahead of where you started. Uh. But that was not the case until, like, yesterday. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it would have been close, I think. Yeah, I guess that is the peak. I guess I went down today after doing Quatch Quest. But, yeah, I, was, I, I rode three times in the month, maybe nine times in the two months before I started chasing yellow and was not on the bike for 18 days before the first race. <laughs> so, wow that is dramatic <laughs> and then did i've now done in the 19 in 21 left, days 19, 21 days so um yeah and it these was, are not easy races well uh, yeah so for those i mean we know we talked about before but it's all cats everybody starts at once and um and yeah like some of them weren't too bad like we had deuce france in stage three and you know that's a pretty flat route, and so I was I, I hung with basically the whole group all went together until well, the whole race, and so the two aqueducts are a little spicy. But um, I was with the group until about I think I told the story about forty three kilometers, and then it was right after the second aqueduct. And there was another race who was pretty close to me in the rankings who had fallen off the back, and they the group was getting a little pedestrian. So I thought, well, I'll push it a little bit. And I pushed it, and then the A's just murdered me and put me right to the sword. <laughs> so that didn't work out for me. Anyway, um, yeah, so I just jumped into it. And yeah, at first, like I got, I went down, 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 like I just cooked. And then I think the Monday, I think it's the turning point is actually the first Monday. Um, rest, day. rest day. And after that, I've just been getting stronger and stronger and stronger and and. So I don't know if that's just I'm maybe a little better able to handle the repeated days or maybe the other guys are doing other races too. Who knows right in Swift. But I've been mostly racing the same time slot, but I have noticed that guys who were cooking me in the first sort of few weeks of the race or first few stages of the series, I'm now competitive with or, you know, some of them I'm beaten now. So it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, just looking at this, your five best uh like ranking points performances from that are all in the last seven stages. 
Uh, so, yeah. like, really, so this is this is the kind of thing that I I always find really interesting. Just like, I I was out of town, so didn't have the the opportunity to really try this. But I, you know, I did like a did my my one my my one week race before I left, thinking like, you know, I'll I'll cram I'll cram in a bunch of training and then uh go on go on break but uh just seeing how a body responds when you are asking something of it repeatedly every day um and i'm i'm really interested to see once you and strong suggestion to take a rest week after uh but once you get back into it like after letting yourself recover like how much of a change does that make in in how you feel like you might be setting prs next month yeah well i think that is the super th that's, that is the thing that i'm interested in too is how i like transition from doing this to like maybe just a little bit of training to just sort of sharpen that peak to hit those number you know whatever we're doing in races or whatever but um yeah, I mean, I listen. I can't recommend it. I don't think it was a particularly good idea, <laughs> but um, but you know, it does. If it doesn't, you know, it doesn't kill you. It makes you stronger, right? Like you, you kind of. It's it, the interesting thing. Like I've never done anything that was like this many days in a row, and there is like a certain amount of strategy or tactics or whatever you want to call it to like how hard do I really want to go on this day, especially like keeping in mind the scoring and the GC and stuff like. You know, I, with those climbing ones, like you can lose a lot of time. And so like, if you're in like a flat one, like do you, do, why press it? Like just sit with your, if you end up 30 seconds behind, cause those guys went and did 400 Watts for five minutes at the end, you know, who cares? Make it up, just, make it up sit. on a climb. Yeah, exactly. You're going to be doing Octobahn the next day. So <laughs> you could probably mm. find 30 seconds there pretty fast. Um, so that's all kind of interesting to take into account. Actually, Octobahn was probably like one of my strongest stages. Like I, did um i went i i negative split the reverse kom like i i did faster on the third one and the finish line was technically not at the end but even when i passed through it i could see it, it was where it ended was almost right when the little thing comes up that tells you how long you're going to be and it showed me the time in the last one and i was like oh i can make this one before i got there so i actually did go hard right into the, the kom mm -hmm. line just so i could set that time a little faster than the other one so um you know that's a that's I don't think you can pace it better than that on an Octobahn, right? Because it was three times. It was reverse, forward, reverse. And, you know, I held, I basically just kind of went with my group on the forward. Um, and then, like, I was the, f I think I was the fastest or second fastest out of my group on the reverse number three. Like, I, I beat my whole group up the hill. Um, I'm seeing a uh, really strong 20-minute uh, effort on peak performance so going up the grade as well yeah uh, that well that was so that one was actually that one wasn't the yeah eats in my and that one's straight from the bottom and definitely like there were um guys who took off like they no this one's not eats in my and uh yeah. so that one there were guys who who definitely tried to like i don't know ride with the a's or whatever they're going to try and do on the bottom and i was like no you, it's only going to get steeper at the top you dummies so i kind of like settled into oh, yeah. i don't know i think i averaged on that thing like 325 or 326 or something like that so i was like at 310 going up the lower part and then when we got across the flat then i started to like ramp it up push and i caught like five people on those switchbacks because then i was doing like 330 340 and they were all burned out from trying to old people it's like there's no like the speed is eight kph like it's yeah. very slow especially when you mm -hmm. get into those switchbacks so um you know that was one where i definitely like you know i'm like i'm no strategic genius but i did there were some people that i definitely beat on the pacing on that one because they just burned out right to hold the front and then they got there yeah. yeah so um but it's, you know, I, I do like, it's been super, I will say like, if you're interested in it and you have the time or something, like I do recommend it. It's been super fun. You, if you're in the same time slot, you like, there are probably 10 of us or so 12 of us that are the same bees in the same time slot every time. And you know, like which guys are 
you know, they were B before, but now they're really an A and which guys are, you know, close to you in the GC and stuff like that. So, you know, there's some pretty good banter and, and, you know, a lot of commiseration and stuff like that. So, so, uh, two, two stages left. Yeah. So Quatch was this morning. Quatch quest was ugly. I was with the lead bees across the top of Epic and then gave up a lot of time on Alp. I still, I did a 56 wow. minute Alp at the end of Quatch. Um, and yeah, I, hey, that's, that's no joke having committing to being like, all right. And on a Friday morning, I'm doing a two hour race. Uh, what is that? 6 a.m. Again, you still yeah, riding the 6 a.m. Yeah. So yeah, it was not pretty. Um, and not, like I, I was with the one guy that was closest to me in the GC for half of the Alp. And then he just, he he actually went quite a bit ahead of me. He was probably like 30 seconds up on me in the first two kilometers of the Alp. And then by the time I got to the halfway mark, I was with him. And then in the back half of the Alp, he just still had it. And I was fading, fading, fading. I went from doing like the segments were all between like 280 and 290 watts. And then the, the back half, I was more like 240 to 260. So yeah, it was, it was hard. I just haven't been riding that long. Like I haven't been doing like two hour rides that much. Like it was all in the legs. Like my heart rate wasn't even that high. My breath wasn't that high. My legs were just too tired to go harder. I mean, I feel like you, you would never have chosen to do this on a training plan, right? I mean, this is like it, which I think is a testament to how fun racing is. Like you're, you're jumping in this with both feet, but if somebody handed you this as a training plan, like you would have been like, yeah, no, thanks. I, I'm, I, I got to wash the cat. I, sorry. <laughs> yeah. The yeah I mean, powers have been sort of uh, high tempo. -y, I would say mid to high tempo. Like but doing, three. but doing three weeks of, Hour plus a, high tempo rides. Is this is, a thousand TSS a week? Right. Yeah. Yeah, probably somewhere in there. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, it, it will be done. Like when we finish, we got Surrey Hills tomorrow. And then there's a TT in the last one. And it, it's something ridiculous. Just a long TT. Uh, Glyph Heights. That's that a lot of just climbing. That, right? Yeah. 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 So uh, this is, it, it is funny looking at your, um, so I just opened up your Strava and looking at your uh, weekly miles. Um, and for the, the last year, your two biggest weeks are the last two weeks. Sounds about right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So like I said, I, I, I'm like, I do not feel too bad. Like I was pretty tired last night and I knew I was going to work hard. So I actually was like in bed pretty early. And I did, like I said, it wasn't too bad. Like I was pretty cooked at the end today, but you know, I was, I was, like I, said, I was with the lead bees that we hit the bottom of um, the Alp, which isn't too bad. Like there were lots of people who were a minute back got dropped on Epic. Um, have, you, have you found so. you've had to change anything? Like, are you just hoovering up food? Well, I do that kind of anyway, but um, okay. <laughs> though usually I don't like doing fully on like no food in the morning. So I usually get a banana in, in the morning. Um, that's sort of my only pre-race food, but wow. then afterward it's that's straight a, to the granola. And then a yeah, two hour a race. Great that's... question is like, how are you fueling on these, yeah. these morning races? Yeah, I eat my banana and then I bring Gatorade on for stuff and which is like for an hour, that's not bad. Like you can go for two hour race that's a that's a struggle yeah. yeah so today i had um i had the peanut m&ms <laughs> nice and nice. two i have two gatorade i can't write two gatorades or one gatorade and two waters but i had some peanut m&ms and i had gatorade and i had waters and i definitely ate the banana first so um, I, uh was that you uh mentioned in the chat that the pe the peanut m&ms were coming and why and why was that because they were, they were, that's what they're eating on the tour de France. They're handing that's them out. They, yeah. yeah. They're, it's like, yeah. Ta Tade man. was pouring them out. <laughs> good enough for those guys. It's good enough for me, man. <laughs> I, I found that really funny because uh, just a couple of months ago, I had a giant bag of peanut M&M sitting in my, in my bike room uh, that like, I, yeah, I'm, I'm ahead of the curve. <laughs> 
And then are you doing any like leg massage, like Theragun, like you're just <laughs> on going into both, work and coming on, home and <laughs> on both the two Wednesday nights I played I played uh, lacrosse. Lacrosse? <laughs> oh, yeah, just <laughs> throw it on top. Yeah. And the one the one day, the first one, I did not race that morning. I raced the late race that day because I couldn't like literally I tried to get out of bed and I couldn't. Like I was just there's no way possible human way I can do this right now. Like I was just cooked. Yeah. Um so I raced I raced that night. And still was probably not that good, but this past Thursday morning, 6 a.m., I was in there. It was something relatively flat ish, sand and so, sequoias. So, so it wasn't too bad. Outside of uh, the races themselves, uh, do you feel like you were more run down week one or week three? Mm. I would say, as tired as I am after Quatch Quest today, as tired as I've been in the whole thing. Um, I would definitely say those first, like there was, uh, either Mayan mash or chasing the sun. One of those really wrecked me. Um, those are both climbier ones, right? I guess chasing the sun's not too bad. Uh, but, uh, they were, I think it was that Mayan mash one after that one. I felt just wrecked. Like that was ugly. So. But your only uh I can't even get myself out of bed was week one. Uh no week the week two. Oh, it was Wednesday week two, night okay. After Snowman. So it was Snowman. Oh. Snowman. Was the race that morning. And then I played lacrosse that night. And then yeah, Thursday morning on the eleventh, I was like, I can't do this. Right. Cool. Yeah, there wasn't there was no lacrosse Wednesday the first week. So but yeah, it's been good. I, I like I, I like it. I wish it would be, it would be fun with a few hurt people. I, I'll I'll tell the one story is so on on the sand and sequoias route, and I don't know. You guys can tell me what you think about this is in terms of etiquette. All the like kind of chasing guys are like, oh, it's you know we got Quatch Quest tomorrow. Like let's all chill out. Like we'll kind of chill out till forty and then we'll open it up. Now we hit the first um, Titans forward KOM and the A's start smashing it and one A guy who is a chasing guy gets in there and the rest of the B's are kind of like, ah, we're going hard, but we're not really. But then one B guy got away with the A's and they time trialed him away and put three minutes into the other B leader on that route. And we were with them and, and you know, the other B guys were like, do you want to go, ch you want to try and hammer this or you want to just chill? And he was like, the leader guy was like, ah, no, just chill. We'll, we'll go again. We get to the climb or whatever. Um, and the four of us that were together on that B, the rest of the B leaders all, you know, um, finished together, give or take. But uh, I was like, you guys are going to tell everyone to go neutral and then drag your one guy across the top. I'm not sure that's super nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a race. Yep. Yep. And the chasing series. So this isn't an isolated thing they do a lot of them but this is more focused on sort of mirroring the tour de france and yeah they do a whole they do a whole year-long thing and and there's a whole different like i think the duros after the tour right so there'll be a one series called like chasing red which is supposed to mirror yeah, yeah. the Giro. when they do okay. um when they do when the classics That's and stuff are on time. they do like they call it chasing Paris or something like that, and it'll be like mm -hmm. Perry Roubaix, that type of thing. So, so they try to have like like so the Giro will be whatever three weeks, same kind yeah. of format, yeah. long and, races, and, and there is like a, a whole full year categorization and stuff of where you sit and all that. Like after chasing mm -hmm. yellow, they'll go back to the velo scores and like everyone can recategorize. Okay. Um, I think they like I hope they force you because there's got to be some of these B guys who are upgraded to whatever the B low score in A is because there's some of them have been smashing the heck out of us. So the mm -hmm. the next uh, chasing are the the following two weekends. Uh, Brent, are you going to do the uh, the chasing gold, uh, which are the oh, Olympics, Olympics, ITT and, oh. and road race? Yeah. <laughs> I I probably won't do Greater London Eight for two hundred and seventy three kilometers. Wait, what? <laughs> that's what it says. I think How that's long the is that going to take? In your 
garage. Six oh hours. my god. Wait, that's the chasing gold road race? Yeah. That's wild. I mean, that's longer than uh that's you longer than I've that. ever ridden. It's longer you... than PRL four, right? Yeah. That's a whole bag. That might be a two bagger of M&Ms. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think my favorite of the uh race names is Chasing Rainbows. Chasing like is no. Kermit. Yeah. yeah. Get your Kermit suit on. What is what's the simulation for I know we're not supposed to technically say, but what is Chasing Rainbows? Is what race would that be simulating? Oh, that's the uh worlds. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. sure. The World Course Championships, which yep. are in Australia this year. I feel like somebody said. I don't Wasn't know that a couple years ago? Like. I don't remember. Maybe. When it gets there, maybe we'll all do it. <laughs> yeah. But hopefully it won't be 273 kilometers. 273 <laughs> kilometers. If it is, I'm not doing it. But that's, that's bananas. It's, it's Zurich this year. Hmm. Can you ride the Alp from Zurich? Is the, is the Alp going to be in the World Champs? Um, that would be I an unusual so. World Champs course because they don't usually. It's a pretty legit finish, right? It's not a mountaintop finish. Well, so they've. I mean, they've done a whole bunch of different um, types of routes um, for worlds. Sometimes it's a fully flat route. Sometimes it's hilly and classicy. Sometimes they've got mountaintop finishes. Been a while since they've done mountaintop. Yeah, tough to put too many uh, spectators up there. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, we're Good. we're beyond our our time. Yeah, line, we gotta. So. I should go back to work. So, all right, we will say thank you to John Keenan, thank you to Sean Fogenberg, thank you to everybody listening, thank you to everyone who's doing the herd races. Enjoy your races this weekend, everybody. Shout out to all the chasing yellow peeps. Moo and good night. Mm -hmm.